Hi, welcome to Maker Monday with the Warren County, I'm sorry, it's Friday Steam. I've got my days all mixed up, haven't you? I know, it's that kind of, uh, it's that kind of time right now. Anyway, it's a pretty rainy, unpleasant looking day here in Warren County, New Jersey, but we're going to make the most of it and have a little bit of fun with sound today. So, Friday Steam, we are going to take science, technology, engineering, art, and math, roll them all together, and learn some really neat new things. My name's Sandy Roberts, and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. Normally, you'd find me at the Southwest Branch in the Makerspace, but for right now, I'm coming to you online, on Facebook, every Friday at 2 p.m., and every Monday at 2 p.m. for Maker Monday. Okay, so, today's project. I am featuring this month for Friday Steam all kinds of inventions that were actually made right here in New Jersey. If you joined me for Maker Monday earlier this week, you might have learned about bubble wrap, which was invented right here in New Jersey. But today we're going to talk about probably, arguably, one of the most famous inventions to come from New Jersey. And that is the phonograph. The phonograph. Do you know what a phonograph is? It's basically a really early record player. Okay, and they would have cylinders or records that would spin and a needle that would go along in them and it would play music. So this was long before we had things like cell phones and smartphones or, you know, that, anything like that. We can stream music back then. You actually had to have a physical cylinder. Well, over the last hundred years or so, that technology has, of course, developed. And today, a lot of people still use records like this vinyl record here. This is a Simon and Garfunkel record. <laughs> um, a lot of people still use these because some folks feel that the sound is just warmer and better on something like this than you could get in an electronic media. So let's talk a little bit about what sound is, how it works, and what the phonograph is and how that works. And we're going to do a couple projects along the way, okay? I want you to make sure that you get together what we're going to need to actually build our phonograph at the end. You're going to need a record, okay? It can be any kind of record. I would suggest you use one you're not too attached to, okay, because it could get scratched. You're also going to need some regular old copy paper. Um, if you have something like cardstock or newsprint, that'll work. Even a paper bag will work. Um, you're going to need you might need scissors if you're using something larger like that. A little bit of tape. You're going to need a pencil. And you're also going to need a needle. Now, I suggest for this, I have some embroidery needles or tapestry needles. They're a little bit bigger than um, some of your finer dressmaking needles. But whatever you happen to have on hand should work for this. And I encourage you to get a whole bunch of different types of needles um, from, you know, mom and dad's sewing kit and try them out and see how they make this different. Okay, this is a little bit of our experiment here, right? Does the size of the needle matter? Does the thickness of the needle matter? Does the material that the needle is made out of make a difference to the sound quality that we get from our phonograph? Um, so that's all you really need for today's project. Let's talk about sound so that you can understand how this all works. And just so you know, this is live. If you have any questions, go ahead and um, I have my iPad here, so I'm looking for any questions or comments. You just let me know, and I will do my best to, uh, to answer anything that you may come up with. So I'm just going to switch right now to um, a little presentation for you. Okay, so what is sound? When we talk about sound, basically what's happening is... The, the sound is traveling in waves through a material, a medium, like air or water. And those waves, you can see, are formed by vibration. So when you speak, for example, I'm talking right now, the vocal cords, these tendon-like, stretchy rubber band-like things in my throat, actually vibrate. And you can try this if you grab yourself a rubber band right now and... You hear that? That's me plucking a little rubber band, just like you might pluck a guitar or a ukulele. That vibration travels on the air in waves, and it goes from the sound source to your ear. And then we have really neat um, membranes and tiny little bones in our ear that can actually 
accept that vibration and transmit it to the nerves that go to our brain and we interpret that as sound. So it's pretty amazing when you think about it that the vibrational energy okay, that we get in sound is actually what we're experiencing. So I wanna show you something real quick, if I can do this. I'm gonna be switching back and forth today, which is a little challenging, but. All right, so I was plucking my rubber band, but you can also have fun with this. I'm gonna put this stuff aside for now. If you get a coffee can, I put a little bit of wax paper over it, a rubber band, okay, to hold it all in place, and now I've made a little drum. So what you can do is you can put some glitter on there. I have these tiny little stones. And if you take a look, when I tap my drum, that vibrational energy, that energy actually moves the rocks. And that's basically what's happening when you speak. The vibration of your sound shakes the air molecules and eventually reaches the membrane in your ear, the tympanic membrane. So you can visualize sound moving in this way, and let's face it, it's fun. Um, so that's just a little wax paper, a coffee can, and a rubber band, and you can actually see sound. All right, back to our little talk over here. All right, so the first phonograph. Typically, we think of the very first phonograph as Edison's phonograph, but there was actually something that came a little bit before. And it was actually called the phonoautograph, um, and I'll explain why in a moment. It was patented by Edward Leon Scott, a Frenchman and inventor, in 1857. Um, and basically, he was trying to study acoustics. Acoustics are really about the quality of sound in a room. So you can hear my voice is a little echoey in this room because... Honestly, there's not really any carpet in here. It's just a big, you know, bare walled room. And the sound of my voice, those vibrations are hitting the wall and bouncing back at me. And that's what's causing that little bit of an echo. So he was trying to understand um, how those kinds of echoes would work, how things might dampen the sound, how they might um, change the sound. And so he created this device where he um, caught the soot from a lamp, from an oil lamp on a piece of glass. And he made this tiny little needle. So when sound was collected here in this kind of tube that he made out of plaster of Paris, actually, the needle vibrated from that sound and scratched that vibration into his glass plate, into the soot covered glass plate. And what was really exciting about this is it's the first time someone was able to visualize sound, to be able to look at sound instead of just hearing it. And it was the first time someone could record sound and see that sound and keep that sound for later. Um, to give you a little bit of an idea of what he did, let me show you something that you can try at home. Grabbing my supplies again. And if we go to my document camera, I've just taken a mirror, an inexpensive mirror, and always get permission, um, and painted it with some poster paint. So this is kind of the same thing as if I was catching soot. And if you want to, you can even try that. You can, with your parents' permission, light a candle and catch that soot on a mirror or on a glass plate or um, anything like that. And then you're going to take a little needle, and I have a, an embroidery needle here, and I'm just gonna pretend I'm the vibration of the sound and scratch that across the paint. And can you see, can you see those little scratches that I caused? Now, again, like I was saying before, different needles are gonna give me different results. I'm trying to get another needle out. Come on, I'm not having a good day with some of these things. Here we go, I'm gonna try a different needle and see what kind of different result I get. And again, on the vibration of that sound, being scratched into the soot on Scott's plates. You could see they're a little different. You can kind of catch them there, okay? So why don't you experiment with that, with permission, of course, and 
try and reproduce Scott's experiment. Okay. Here we go. Now, his results, his sound, though he could record it, he couldn't play it back. It wasn't sound that you could capture and like play like we do today. Um, so while it served his purpose for his experiment, it's, it really didn't catch on. Nobody else really used it. So about 20 years later came Thomas Edison and he had a problem. He was trying to figure out how to take telegraph messages, which were sent in like beeps. If you've ever heard a beep, 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 in those old time movies, that's a telegraph. And he was trying to figure out how to transcribe the messages coming from the telegraph onto a piece of, of paper so that you could record them and, and have them, you have notes for later. Well, as it turned out, <laughs> uh, he needed to start putting some other inventions together, which is part of what I love about this story. He had a problem he was trying to solve. He'd already worked on the telegraph. He'd already worked on a telephone. And he was saying to himself, how do I take these two different inventions and maybe mash them up into something brand new. And a lot of times that's what we do in engineering. We, we take things that already exist and we make them even better. And that's what he did here. He took elements from both the telegraph and the telephone and made a device that, much like the, the previous invention, the needle vibrated to sound. And you can see this is his horn over here is made of metal and it would be placed here. And so there's a needle in here and as the sound vibrates that needle, it scratches into this cylinder. Now, Edison used a cylinder that was a thin, thin sheet of foil, tin foil, in fact, on a barrel. Um, and that's what he used to record a sound. He later moved on to uh, wax. Now, that's basically the same as what, um, you know, Scott was doing. And if we want to take a look at it, you know, I've got a toilet paper roll that I covered with some foil and used some glue. And if I again get out my needle, I can, oh, I'm, I'm vibrating, I'm vibrating just like a sound is coming in, right? And you can see, I can see that those uh, sounds being scratched into the surface of my cylinder. And so you can play with that. This is fun to do, actually. It's just cool. Um, but I can't really do anything with that, right? Well, Edison figured out from his work on the telephone that if, and from the work of Scott, and this is another important idea in engineering, we often take inventions or ideas that others have had and work them into what we're creating and make something new. So he realized that if he then took a second needle that went through those little scratches that he had made the first time, he could reproduce that sound. So he would record by scratching into the tube and then he'd come back with a different needle a little bit later and as it went over the grooves in that foil, it was able to play back the sounds that he had recorded on the tube. And that was huge, 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 huge. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like now. Give it 130, 140 years of innovation. Oh gosh, longer than that, 150 years of innovation now. And we have the record player, okay? And so records are made very much the same way. The initial master copy, okay, is basically scratched into the vinyl, which you can kind of see down here, okay? This is um, done with an uh, electro microscope, electron microscope. But, um, so you make this master that records the sound, scratching it into the vinyl. And instead of a cylinder, now we have a flat disc and we go around in circles. Um, and then they take that master and they actually press, they make a negative of it, they make an opposite of it, kind of fill in those grooves with a really hard material. And then they take that press and they press it into warm vinyl. And that's how they get many mass produced records because as Edison found, as many folks found, it was tough to mass produce these um, musical recordings. And once they figured out how to start mass producing those wax cylinders, that's when the phonograph took off. Okay, so these are our 
um, grooves that are cut and you can see the needle goes through those grooves and vibrates and by reproducing the vibration we can reproduce the sound. Nowadays um, we can amplify that sound because we take these vibrations and turn them into electrical current and then put it through an amplifier so that we can hear that sound much better. Back in the olden days, um, here we go. I lost my picture of a phonograph, but that's no problem. I'm gonna show you what it looks, where'd it go? Here we go. So, my apologies here. I was having some technical difficulties earlier and I lost everything I had planned. So, here's a, a nice, this is a nice picture of kind of your standard phonograph. Open that in another window for me. New tab, here we go. So since they didn't have um, kind of the same ability to electronically, easily electronically amplify, they had to mechanically amplify the sound. And that's why these phonographs had these huge horns on them. Because as the sound vibrated from the disc here, the needle would go through those little grooves on the disc and travel up this tube and then this flared out shape of a horn would actually cause that sound to bounce around through that tube and replicate itself basically, make more of the same sound waves and amplify the sound. So it was a very uh, smart way to use just a mechanical shape to amplify the sound. Nowadays we do all that with uh, electronics, okay? Alrighty. Here we go. So, now that you understand a little bit about how sound works and how record players and phonographs work, let's go ahead and experiment with our own. Okie dokie, get my, my materials here. Where did my record go? Oh, there it is. It's hiding underneath. First, we're going to build our horn, okay? And again, this is a spot where you can do a lot of experimentation. Does it help to make a really big horn? Does it help to make a really small horn? Does how wide the horn uh, gets make a difference? Or is it better to have a narrow horn? That's why we just use something inexpensive like copy paper to make our horn. Because you can make many different versions. And that's why it's fun to have different materials on hand um, and things like that. So all I'm going to do is just take my paper, okay, and I'm just making a little... Um, cone, basically. Where's my tape? Here we go. So I'm making a little cone with my paper. I'm not, I'm not going to be super careful and neat about it. You may choose to be. You may even choose to decorate your horn if you like. That is up to you. You may want to play with it first, prototype it first to get it just the way you like, and then go ahead and decorate so there we go. I've got a cone. And then I'm going to get one of my tapestry needles, which has kind of disappeared. And I really, really need fingernails. I can't pick things up off of trays. I've been biting my nails. Who else is biting their nails? Everybody a little stressed out, right? What are you going to do? All right, I'm going to switch to the document camera so you can see how to do this. Here's my cone. Here's my needle. I'm just going to push my needle through the very end of my cone like that. If you can see how I did that. Okay? And again, you might have to experiment with placement a little bit. But the idea is that this needle is going to go through the grooves on our record. Okay? And it's going to vibrate the needle, and that vibration is going to echo out through our little impromptu paper horn. And you may want to get out your smartphone or a magnifying glass and take a look, you can actually, let's see if my camera can autofocus on it. I'm going to try and get it to autofocus. There we go. Um, you can actually see the grooves on the record player, right? Can you see them? Oh, that was a good shot. Those tiny little grooves on there. And then each band has a different song. Okay, that's how records work, for those of you that may not know. And you can actually run your fingers over it and you can feel, feel that. All right, so here we go. Time, time for our big 
moment of truth. I need a bigger desk. I think I always say that though. No matter how much space I have, I'm always saying I need a bigger desk. All right, so now I need a pencil. You wanna get one that's got kind of a sharp point to it. You may, by the way, <laughs> want a little bit of help for this. I'm gonna to attempt to do it on my own. It's gonna be a challenge, I'm not gonna lie. Doing this with one person is hard. The point of your pencil is gonna go into your, the center of your record, the little hole in your record, and just kind of wedge it in there. You may need to use the masking tape to wrap around your pencil if it doesn't fit well, because you want to get a, a pretty good, um, you want it pretty balanced in there. Mine fits really nicely. And you can kind of see, can you see, we're going to spin this record like this, okay? So normally you would put this on a turntable, and if you have a turntable at home and you want to give that a shot, you can. Um, but we're basically going to use it like a little top, like that, okay? So, and then all you're going to do is, and again, I'm going to try to do this up off the ground. You're going to basically put your, when well, you can kind of hear it, you're going to put your phonograph on there and turn your record. Let's see if I can get a good sound for you. Like I said, this is definitely one of those times you, you want to get help. You want to have a second person helping you out. All right, let's see if I can do this. And can you hear that? You can actually hear. You can hear the music playing. <laughs> now, the speed that you turn the record is going to affect the sound. And that's because, remember when we looked at those waves way back here? Whoop way back, where's my presentation? Here it is. So when we looked at the waves way back here, and this is where we're gonna talk a little math here. The distance between the peaks, okay, is really important to sound. The shorter the distance between these peaks, okay, the higher the pitch, the higher the pitch. The more distance between these peaks, the lower the pitch, the lower the pitch. We talk about that as frequency, okay? So the frequency of these waves affect the pitch, the pitch of the sound, which means in the case of our um, impromptu paper phonograph over here, the speed that I'm turning my record is going to affect the pitch of the sound. So if you have a record at home, you can try setting it to a different um, RPM. All, all records are, you know, they have RPM, which means rotations per minute. And you can change that to either slow it down and lower the pitch or speed it up and, and uh, heighten the pitch. So that's fun to do too. Anyway, this is fun to play with. It's, it's actually like one of those, it's like a ninja challenge, trying to get it just right. So that is the paper phonograph. And I would love for you guys to try recording, maybe set up your cell phone to record your paper phonograph and see what kind of sounds you can get. Let me point out one other project for you that again seems to have left my um, browser, but I can find it pretty quickly. Um, a paper artist and inventor who I really adore, Rob Ives, has lots of great educational projects. And I believe, yes, here it is. And I'll post the link um, in the uh, comments, but he actually designed a paper phonograph that you can build and play your cell phone through it to amplify the sound mechanically without the volume button. So that's a really great rainy day project for you. You can build this, the directions are all available on Instructables, and again, I will post that link for you. You can download the template. All the instructions are provided, even a little video that shows you how to build it. So I would love to see if you guys go ahead and build one of these, because it's a really fun way to get to play with that mechanical amplification that uh, was invented for the phonograph. So just a little idea if you're looking for something to do today. All right, well, 
Thank you so much for coming to Friday STEAM with the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator and I will be back here at 2 p.m. every Friday with more projects. As I said, for the rest of this month, we're exploring inventions made here in the Garden State in New Jersey. So next week, we have steam powered because, I don't know if you know this, but the first steam engine was invented here in New Jersey and some of the very first trains as well. Um, so we are going to be having a lot of fun with convection. We're going to understand why heat rises, and we're going to look at the engineering of the steam engine. Okay, so we've got a lot of fun planned for next week. Don't forget to join me on Monday at 2 p.m. for Maker Monday as well. I've got projects ready to go for you there too. I'm trying to think, what did I plan for next week? I'm totally blanking on what my plan is for next week. Here's the thing. If you're not sure, go to the Warren County Library website, warrenlib, W-A-R-R-E-N-L-I-B dot org, O-R-G. And if you go to our calendar, we have all of our events up there. So online things like this, our story times, our adult crafts, as well as Zoom groups that are meeting uh, for book clubs, for Pokemon club, anime club, gaming sessions. We have so much offered wonderful tutorials on our YouTube um, site and on Facebook. We may not be able to be with you at the library right now, but we are with you in spirit. We are thinking about you and we really want you to stay safe and stay healthy, connect with us and keep learning. All right. I will see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you.